Hey everyone, this is Rushlock, and we're going to go over the winter status update posted by CCP. Uh, we'll dive into the intro here. It's, you know, the meat and potatoes part is that uh, they re-mentioned the pillars that they're focusing on, building a vibrant EVE e ecosystem. So, basically a, a healthy one. Well, the last 10 years, things were out of control, were left unchecked, and uh, their efforts toward getting that back in line with what is a sustainable system. Helping new players out to make sure there are new untrained pilots coming in every month to join your ranks. Uh, they have definitely been improving and working on the new player experiences. It's seen many iterations over the last couple of years. Uh, I still presumably biasedly think the best option for CCP is to direct their new users to the Twitch directory to get live real-time interaction with players, getting them into communities that can make them more accessible to the tools around them. But uh, the in-game uh, interaction for new players has definitely improved over the last couple of years. And finally, investing in a, the technical infrastructure of the game. That's tech-based. That's, you know, software, hardware, uh, you know, 20 going in a 30-year-old game. Things have to change up and keep up with the times, right? So a new dawn. Nearly two years ago, we both, CCP and the players, began a massive undertaking to bring the economy to a healthy state and to set the game up for a third decade. We understand full well that it was not without challenges and hardships. And while EVE players are well known for being most uh, the most resilient problem solvers in gaming, we're aware of the strain it put on you. Now that, that order and balance has been restored to the resource and manufacturing aspects of New Eden, more resources have and will become available, uh, and focus can be put on other areas of New Eden. So basically just saying that the uh, this and the live stream that went along with it the yesterday from the timing of this recording, that they've gotten stockpiles closer to or moving toward the direction that they want to see them in. Um, I'm actually surprised by that. We, we've seen nothing actively depletes uh, stockpiles happen despite having a quote-unquote war uh, ended recently or relatively recently and right, you know, went on for about a year. Um, so the natural drain of just use apparently with uh, scarcity in play uh, limiting what can be acquired and, and gathered in that time frame uh, according to CCP was enough to deplete stockpiles in a uh, significant manner and push it continuously uh, toward a more equilibrium that they're looking for. I thought that was very interesting. It didn't line up with anything I expected from uh, the external view, looking from the outside looking in. So I, I thought that was that was definitely a standout topic. Uh, from extraction to production, announced a bevy of changes. We typically don't post updates as comprehensive, dense, and raw as we did with this blog. But with so much changing and so much at stake, we wanted to as much feedback on the changes as possible. This is in reference to all the mining changes. Um, the compression got walked back uh, because it was it just looked half baked. Like uh, so much other other systems for mining and and, and the changes in the, in the in the dev blog, like you can see there was a plan and they got some compression. It looked like some of it just got slapped together. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. It was the perception. It was how it was received. And uh, or compression changes got walked back and will be reintroduced sometime in the future when they can be iterated upon in a more acceptable manner. Uh, on that note, it has been a lively few weeks. We've been listening, discussing, and adjusting based on comments and responses. A huge thank you must go out to all those players who started conversations and provided constructive feedback on the forums, podcasts, blog streams, Discord communities, and elsewhere. Man, that constructive criticism, like, or feedback, like, this is a hard one to understand because most users are not capable of it. And... Most users don't want to hear that. They want to feel validated. They want to feel valuable. They want to feel like they matter. Um, the issue is either someone gets too emotionally attached and becomes unable to provide useful feedback, or the person in the first place simply didn't have the capacity to do so. You know, take someone of average intellect. You know, assume then that fifty percent of people are of below average intellect or capacity. Intellect's probably too harsh a term, but. If you're below average, you're not going to be able to provide the feedback more often than not. And then even if you're above average for or at average for capacity to, to interact in this way, you get emotionally charged into it and you, you push yourself down towards the, the end of the, the player pool that, that can't do it. And so it'll look like, you know, the overwhelming majority of people will have an opinion or share it or echo it. And in reality, they're just exposing how they've tribalized or or congregated around an idea that's just bad and dumb, and they don't know how to, to articulate uh, anything other than I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. We'd also like to thank CSM16, with whom we've been working with on these changes since August, for providing valuable feedback and context for the upcoming changes. 
Uh, this is more meme posting with, you know, it's funny because it's, it's slightly true. I like the idea of chucking the CSM under the bus and being like, hey, you guys mad? Remember, you voted these nerds in and they definitely had way more hand and authority in there than, than they ever have before. And like that narrative is actually getting pushed. I just think it'll be funny when, when people latch onto that and, you know, go grr CSM and then grr no blocks being on the CSM and then grr all the, you know, repetitive, uh, stances we've seen before. Mining is the cornerstone of New Eden, and mining ships across the board are now stronger, more efficient, and more accessible. Uh, this is interesting to me because it's basically glazing over, like, because we've removed orcs as a mining ship, right? Um, orcas as well. Though I've heard and seen people posting on discords, like, there are, there are ways to get your orca fitted up, or there are ways to fit up a, a certain type of barge to um, pseudo-match the old AFK orca uh, yield output, obviously with far reduced tank. Um, but we'll see how that plays out. Let's see. We want the, to create the same kind of diversity for miners as other careers, and we are already seeing a large increase in both mining volume, so amount being mined, and number of players doing the activity. This also opens up possibilities for the future, especially as it pertains to dynamic distribution for future mining sites. So when they say that they see an uptick in number of players mining, they obviously mean number of accounts, not number of players. And I wonder, and I can't, I can't say this is one way or the other, I'm just curious, I wonder if the uptick in accounts being being uh, tracked are people who are stubbornly like, well, I'm used to getting X and Y yield per time invested of me logging in, so now it takes me more accounts to do it, which is just, you know, a cash grab and I'm mad. And like, these posts come from somewhere, right? Like, there have to be people actually doing this. And I wonder if CCP has the tools to parse out uh, accounts versus players on this. Maybe they do. I'm not aware of it. So maybe this is just... Uh, not intentionally, but definitely uh, not misleading wording, but inaccurate. Just simply inaccurate. I, I don't know. It could be dead on. It might be accounts, not players, but we'll see. Uh, attention ha will be paid to production bottlenecks as they arise. Faction and pirate battleship construction will be uh, valuable to undertake. For battleships, the approach will be to boost the power of those ships to be more in line with the cost and complexity associated with building them. Battleships hold a great spot in Eve's history. We don't care, blah, blah, blah. So... Basically, they're like they're acknowledging shipbuilding prices are are not conducive. They're not healthy. Um, they believe that they're moving in the right direction, and they are gonna they CCP are gonna do more to help encourage that. And then for battleships, they're like that's not even anywhere near close, uh, and we're not gonna be able to approach that in the same way. So we're gonna buff battleships to help them seem quote unquote worth the investment of resources to to build them. Uh, whether or not they'll be successful, you know, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, areas of focus until Fan Fest. Uh, let's see. Compression. We've already talked about compression. They're going to push that back. We'll get back to it later. No reason to go over it again. Uh, Rorks. During the Age of Abundance. Man, that is a generous way of naming it, right? Um, and, and you have to remember, a company has a line it can't cross, right? No one from CCP is going to go out there and fall on a sword that and take the quote-unquote hit for something that may not have even been something going on when they were there. Um, but when Rorks got buffed the first time, what, 10 years ago? I won't say the first time they ever got buffed, but when they got turned into the, uh, what they self-described as the, the end-all, be-all, right? It was the, the mining ship of choice. Uh, during the Age of Abundance, a few hundred Oracles were outperforming the rest of the universe combined in terms of mining yield. So that was created to uh, hyper-incentivize monetization, to get nerds training, get nerds slamming isk and, uh, and skill points. And, you know, because you, you had to stay on top, right? You had to compete. You know, if you don't do it, someone else will, and then you'll be behind. Um, and then I got left in a game state for 10 years, and then, oh, you know, we have a very healthy economy now. I guess we should finally, finally fix that. Uh, as much as people would like to complain about it, Pearl Abyss purchasing CCP is actually what freed CCP up to be able to make changes that wouldn't be necessarily popular uh, to prepare for that third decade and, and beyond. Uh, with the work being so efficient and powerful, it's all, it almost necessitated players. Yeah, we talked about that already. Uh, while the world's work has been reverted to the on-field support ship, it buffed mining foreman links, panic feature, and survivability, and compression cap capability, tied with an impressive solo mining yield. So I don't know if they're talking in past or, or, or present tense. Like, um, if you're able to post in the comments, if you happen to know, what is the old mining yield and what is the new mining yield? Because if, if the mining yield needed to be nerfed, I presumed into, into the dirt, but they're posting here like it's still, you still have ore to be gathered in while you're providing all these other features for your fleet. 
but now you're going to have a Rourke per grid instead of a Rourke per, per you know, mining location. Um, or per, per, you know, however many works a player wants to scale up to to delete a, a, a grid for, for resources. Um, but yeah, if someone can post in the, in the comments below, that's something that stood out to me was they were still mentioning work yield as a, as a positive feature. And, and uh, I get after being nerfed, that's not going to be something that people want to post publicly, po positively about very much. But if you happen to know the math about pre and after uh, the update, I, I'm very curious about that. Whether you're planning to fly them or build them, capital uh, ships represent an aspirational goal for players. And that was a problem, right? They become so proliferated and, and, and available and meaningless uh, and then stockpiled that um, it's interesting to me that while they're talking about raw resource stockpiles getting where they want to be, but what about ship stockpiles, right? That's a lot harder for them to interact with, and I'm, I'm curious what they're going to do. Uh, they mentioned they're going to make... Um, in addition, more capital-oriented combat sites, and they're going to try and make the rewards worth the risk. Players really, really don't like risk, right? Especially established players. New players coming in won't have that skewed perspective, but your established players who have these capitals already are going to have to see a hell of a carrot on a stick to be willing to undock them and risk them and lose them because the replacement cost right now is so, so incredible. Uh, Citadels, they talk about the uh, issue of proliferation, uh, they've been in communication with uh, talented and prolific fleet commanders all across the, all areas of New Eden. And basically, they're looking for feedback. Like, look, you know, Citadels were also a, a carrot on a stick. We didn't plan for scaling very well. Now they've uh, proliferated all over space. They're a big pain in the butt to get rid of. Um, something we're looking at, and but we have nothing to announce at this time, basically. Uh, Sov here section I thought was pretty interesting. They wanted, they wanted to shake things up with Sov a bit. Um... And they mentioned small, medium, and large groups in space to fight over allowing players to control space to decide what that space will be used for. I'm curious what they mean by small, medium, and large group. Um, my, my perception, I mean, large is pretty straightforward, I mean, the blocks. Medium, uh, the groups that aren't blocks yet, but, uh, but wish they were. Or small. You know, when I hear small group, I'm thinking like single-digit number of people. But they might be thinking small alliances that maybe typically hang out in low sec currently because they're not ready to make that transition uh, in the solve or the medium groups who may also be in low stack or wormholes or whatever, uh, who, who, uh, struggle to find a place where they can punch in. Right. So I think they're going to try and make punching into solve space, uh, easier. I don't know if easier is the right word, more accessible, more, more realistic probably. Um, but what they're going to do about that, we have no idea. They mentioned I hubs will play a critical role. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Next, they mentioned Eve Academy. So the Eve Academy is a website platform that CCP launched, um, let's see, back in September, yeah. And it's meant as a, when that new player comes in, into New Eden, they want to keep people in-house, right? And so they can't learn everything in-game. So if they go to Eve Academy, they can be linked to resources that will be helpful. And there's a plethora of, and a wide variety of, of resources they point people toward. You know, various Twitch content, various YouTube content, um, charts, graphs, you know, data, things of that nature. Uh, I think the Eve Academy in concept is is very good and very, very positive. Um, it seems like it'll be a huge manpower, like labor hour sink for keeping it updated and relevant. Um, I, I don't see a lot of options there to future-proof, just because of the nature of Eve. There's always changes. There's always things being updated. Um, but we'll have to see how that, that gets handled. Uh, they mentioned that... Uh, the new NPE uh, is already a, the average first session of people trying out the game for the first time has increased by 30%, which is leading to increased retention. Um, we don't have the numbers. We don't have the, the data. I'm curious if people playing longer is being interpreted as retention. Um, never go by the launcher exclusively, but we we haven't noticed a uh, significant uptick in in... Um, player activity in terms of day-to-day -day login numbers. Uh, it doesn't mean that it hasn't happened from some perspective, but we haven't seen anything to suggest that, that this is getting the traction that it's that's hyping. Maybe the, the KPIs, I don't want to say are misinterpreted, but maybe the wrong KPIs are being valued. Um, and not that those KPIs don't have value, but maybe the, the data or the conclusions being drawn from them, um, for whatever reason, are not, not lining up with what we see on the launcher. And people hyper focus on the launcher uh, because it's the the stat that people can the public can visibly see, right? 
Uh, I wonder if that number will ever go away. It, I, I can imagine the, the angry Reddit posts if ever did. But I wonder if that'll be something that they decide to like, hey, this is a distraction. We need to deal with it. Uh, that's not saying that they should on my behalf. Just I wonder if it's something they talk about. The next step will be to add a mining chapter in order to teach a core competency. Give uh, new players a taste of more things they can do in New Eden. And give them a fundamental skill set as time progresses. The goal is to move further into Capsular's life and apply the same tech and artistry. Uh, that makes me, or reminds me of something I want to talk about earlier about mining ships, about them wanting to add choice and variety. Um, it's it's got to be challenging to do because at the end of the day, all mining is the same. You're shooting a rock, you're shooting gas, you're shooting at ice with a laser um, or technology or whatever. Like, I get they're going to try and, and they're getting a variety in the, the tools being used, but there's not much variety in the activity, right? You just lock target, turn on harvester, and... Uh, turn Netflix back on, right? And if you have a, a good peripheral awareness and in, in, or Intel system, you'll uh, stay safe. And if you don't, you're just, you know, hoping for the best. With the updates to skill training and introduction of opportunities, we are helping players set goals early on in their EVE career. The newly released corporation skill plans allow players to author optimal skill plans to get new recruits up and running, as well as create doctrine skill plans for combat operations, industry, etc. Um... Nothing I've seen with the opportunity system in game has looked attractive to me ever, uh, but the skill plan system seems to have been greatly improved. Uh, from the perspective of having people come into Twitch chat who are new to the game, and you know, hey, I'm looking at these opportunity things, but they don't seem to do anything. I don't, I, I don't get rewarded for following the opportunity. They they follow the opportunity just to do a task, and and that's by design. But it, it from from the interactions I've had with new people in Twitch chat. It isn't having the, it isn't resonating the way I think that they intended it to, they being CCP. Uh, the new players that I interact with that have done the opportunities uh, just see it as like a, a checklist, like go mine 5,000 ore. Okay, what did I get for that? Like, they, it's almost like they interpret it as, a, as an achievement and then they complete the achievement and then get nothing for it. And I think CCP is like, well, but now you have the ore, but the player doesn't have the, the awareness yet to value or perceive value for the ore or the rat kills, or you know whatever the opportunity is to do. Um, and so just, it's a bit hollow for them. They get discouraged, and they kind of disengage from it. And when I, they come to Twitch chat, I'm like, yeah, you can, you can just go ahead and minimize that opportunity window, and then ask questions here, and we'll, we'll sort you out. Uh, furthermore, fittings are supported in the creation process, so players without corporations can still tap into community power by dragging community fittings into their skill plans, starting training with a single button click, Additional acts, uh, additional acts of the MPE will fold updated career agents into the mix. That's interesting. I, I've heard a while back that the traditional career agents were on the chopping block, and it sounds like this is going to be the intended replacement for them. So we'll have to stay tuned and check that out. Um, this talks about, you know, their, let's see. Yeah, they keep have EVE Academy website getting an increase in traffic. Uh, they've launched on Epic Store. They've launched on Mac. They've gotten more visible for the game itself. Um, is that going to, you know, relate into seeing an increase in, in login numbers? That's, that's the number that, people, that the public's going to be hyper-focused on, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, lastly, as a technical foundation, to be very upfront, I don't have the technical background to get into this any de into, with any depth. Uh, we will link the uh, winter status update in the description down below the video. So if you are more minded toward understanding this part of it, I'll make sure that you can read it. Um, in closing, they just you know, kind of wrap things up. Uh, the, ecosystem are strong, the ecosystem is strong. Uh, Plex prices have stabilized. They're happy with Plex prices and stockpiles. Um, you know, they, 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 the, the war on botting is going to be eternal. They're never going to stop fighting botting, but they can introduce systems to discourage it or make it less efficient and things like that. Um, there are more ways to earn a living. It's kind of a hard sell to make that right now because we're early in the, the, the update cycle. And so you've had all these big changes to the system that have shocked people's capacity for making ISK, you know, and, and the effort... Like the time is the same, but the effort has gone up uh, or or inversely, you know, maybe you do the same activity you've always done, but it just simply takes more time. And the ones that are taking more time are going to be more angry than the ones that take more effort because the ones ha who require more effort to make the same amount of risk they were making before will simply change to a different activity, then get mad that it takes more time for them to do what they were doing before. Uh, it's going to be hard for new players to understand the ceiling has come down. That's intentional. And this is the new ceiling you live under. Um, and we have to wait and see if this post-Age of Scarcity uh, dawn, new dawn launch uh, is actually going to create more wealth and more opportunities the way that they claim that it will. Uh, but yeah, that should be everything. This video has gone on way long enough. Uh, if you haven't done so already, 
uh, hit the follow button down below, the subscribe button, because we're on YouTube here. And uh, leave comments if you can. If there's a section of this dev block that was interesting to you, and you have some input you want to share, please do so. I very much enjoy talking to the nerds on uh, YouTube. And uh, I usually do some from my phone when I'm at home. Uh, when I leave the office, I don't have all the setup that I have um, throughout the day. So on my phone, I just have the YouTube interactions and always look forward to those comments. So click down below the, the uh, video for the link to this dev blog or this winter status update. And uh, stay safe and we'll see you all next time.